I love, you know, the sort of Jim Jonesian approach, and I love Mark's approach to the actors and the physicality. When we were doing 300, and you see the actors who make the workout part of their acting, I think that that's what Mark loves to get at, and it's fun for me. I think Zach understands physicality in a way that the other directors don't. It's a little bit unusual for us to train actors, uh, even though that's what Jim Jones is most known for. The way Jim started was myself and a couple of other climbers. We started training some different fighters and guys who compete in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, guys who also rely on their bodies. Um, that developed into professional athletes, but most of our education and training is actually done with the military. For the last 14 years, we've worked with various tier one assets, the top of the food chain military units. Those two things actually work quite well together because for me in the mountains, fitness was often the difference between life and death. In a military environment, it can be the same thing. You never want to come up short due to a lack of conditioning. When we talk about training, one of the most important characteristics, I believe, is functional training. And by functional, I mean transferable. The training that you do in the gym should be transferable to the actual task, which means that if I have to sprint forward to grab a buddy who might be injured and drag him back to a point of cover, then sitting on a bench wearing a little seat belt and doing quad extensions is not transferable. When you're training for your military tasks, you should be training to develop functional fitness, not the appearance of fitness. Point number one in our training philosophy in the gym is that the mind is primary. And one of the outcomes of training the mind in the gym is the development of values. Values that are very similar to military values. One of the things for me that's important in the gym is that you always do what you say you're gonna do. You show up every single day. What we practice in here becomes a habit, and if my habit is to always do less, that's how I'm gonna behave in the field. So get in the habit of doing more than you're asked to do. Respect starts with self-respect. If you respect yourself, you prove to others that you are worthy of their respect. One of the things I like to do is set up sort of a tag team type of a workout where one guy has to accomplish a particular task all the while his teammate is suffering. And the faster he does it, the less his teammate suffers. These types of workouts really cause a person to dig deeper than they would to save themselves because we will always work harder in the service of someone else. In the gym context, we always know when people are telling the truth and when they're not telling the truth. If you do what you say you're doing and it comes to diet, then the result will be obvious. If you do what you say that you're doing in terms of training, then the result is going to be obvious. When we make that honor, that honesty part of our daily life, then it becomes automatic. A lot of times we assign homework to people outside of the gym because I need to know how they're going to behave on their own. Does that person have the integrity to do exactly what they said they were going to do? In the training environment, if we practice on a daily basis confronting the things that we're afraid of and confront our fear, if we get in that habit, then we'll be able to express that in an automatic way once we get outside into the real world. My name's Specialist Burden. I'm from Huntsville, Alabama. Private First Class Riggs, Colorado Springs, Colorado. Specialist Freddie Valencia, Maryland. My name is Specialist William Harris. I'm from Denver, Colorado. My name is Specialist Ryan Newbold. I am from Salt Lake City, Utah. In the following episodes of the Soldier of Steel training plan, we're going to teach some of the fundamental and universal movements you will need to know in order to execute the workout that ties all of those together. In part four, we're going to examine the connection between Jim Jones, the Man of Steel movie, and the National Guard.